What's going on guys, JP back at you once again. Sorry that I have not put out a video in such a long time, but I've been extremely busy going through a lot of different craziness uh, in my life right now, so I just have not uh, sat down to make a video, but I assure you with October rolling around, we're going to be doing videos very soon. Anyway, this is a DVD slash Blu-ray slash VHS slash Laserdisc slash book update. This is by far the biggest update that I've ever done and it's because I've put it off for months and months and months. Uh, not that I don't enjoy doing updates, it's just that I did not find the motivation to set everything up because uh, I needed two full tables this time to actually uh, fit all of the things. So with that said, I'm going to get into this because I'm sure it's going to be a long one. Uh, to start things off, let's go into the Laserdiscs I got. I'm not a Laserdisc collector, but I did just recently get a Laserdisc player. I did a video on it. Search my channel if you want to check it out. Anyway, in that video, I was gifted three Laserdiscs from my friend Jeremy, uh, aka and NES Ruler 20 to check out his channel by the way guys I'm a little sick so excuse the voice and and the sniffling going on uh, first up here we got Terminator 2 Judgment Day which is uh, by far one of my favorite films uh, ever made it is in my top five favorite films ever I absolutely love this movie it is such a classic uh, it is the best sequel of all time in my opinion and uh, happy to have it on a laser disc uh, and after that we have uh, John Carpenter's The Thing, which is in my top five favorite horror films of all time. Uh, it is a bona fide 10 out of 10. It is also my favorite John Carpenter film, and I am very happy to own it on Laserdisc. Uh, these things are cool. They're like giant ass album type things. I like that a lot. Uh, I like records. And uh, finally here, this one was a little beat up, but uh, nonetheless, it's still pretty cool to own in the collection, and that is Friday the 13th. Uh, there's a huge um, tear here on the cover, but it Jeremy got it like that and you know he had another copy so he hooked me up with this one um, I'm so happy to own it even with that little tear there because I love the Friday the 13th films it's my favorite franchise so uh, very happy to own that so let's get into I guess let's get into the book that I grabbed um, just one book I don't really read a whole lot and probably this will sit on the shelf until we eventually cover these films on the podcast but that is Stephen King's Carrie. Uh, I'm not a huge reader, and when I do, it's usually digital or audiobook form. I just don't have the space to have paperback or hardcover books. But I'm very, you know, happy to own Carrie. Uh, I've read it when I was in middle school, so uh, happy to own it. I uh, got it at a flea market for like 50 cents, so can't complain. All right, let's jump into the VHS, guys. Uh, this is um, a new thing that I've been doing. I've been picking up a lot of VHS at Goodwills uh, every once in a while. Um, you know, dollar VHS, can't really complain with that. And uh, let's uh, hop into here. Uh, these are from months of just going to Goodwill, you know, once or twice a week, finding stuff. Uh, I try not to buy, like, the more common stuff. I look for things that, that I'm not familiar with and maybe that aren't on DVD. But it, it's rare to find that stuff, at least at my Goodwill. So... <laughs> <clears throat> First up here, excuse me guys, uh, we have something that I was actually very excited about, and that is uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street Dream Master, this is part 4, The Making Of. So this is not the film, this is actually The Making Of A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, which I thought was really cool. I've never actually seen this VHS before, but this is the stuff that I'm looking for. I'm sure this is probably on some DVD feature by now, but uh, it's really cool to spot stuff like this that, you know, it doesn't have its own DVD release, and it's just something that actually uh, is worth hanging on to in terms of a collection. So uh, that was really cool. I was really excited to, to see that. I actually thought it was just Dream Master at first, and um, which I probably would have bought anyway, even though I already owned it on VHS. I'm kind of weird like that. I just love Freddy. Uh, after that, we have... A movie that I would never ever pick up on DVD probably, but honestly kind of want to watch, and that is Universal Soldier. I've seen it before way back in the day. I remember liking it. It's just one of those movies that um, I'm not going to put in my collection because I don't collect non-horror stuff. Unless it's on VHS for a dollar, then maybe. Um, but that, it's also becoming a problem because I'm buying too many VHS. Uh, this was also another one of those very, 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 very cool, exciting surprises, much like the Elm Street 4, uh, but this one might even be cooler. This is the Sticks and Stones, an exploration of the Blair Witch Project, and this is a blockbuster exclusive, and it's actually sealed here, even though it does say previously viewed, so I don't know if they resealed it or what, but it's a blockbuster exclusive. 
I've never seen this. This is such a cool find because it's like, I love the Blair Witch Project and I love uh, the little different things that would come out for promotion for the Blair Witch Project and this seems like something that is uh, super um, rare, you know, it's not something, I, it d definitely doesn't have a DVD release, it might be on a special feature for the Blair Witch or something, but uh, to have a individual release of this is really neat. Um, after that we have Scream, and I already own Scream on VHS, the only reason I got this um, is because it says includes exclusive behind the scenes Scream feature at and it's also one of the, I guess what you would call, um, court, it's the Courtney Cox packaging. So I guess there was um, uh, like four or five different packagings with the cover. And I just, I had never seen this before, so I just figured I would grab it for that. Uh, you know, it's only a dollar. I grabbed another copy of Hellraiser. Um, actually, this is my first copy of Hellraiser, excuse me. Uh, this is uh, a film that I loved growing up and and have become what much more of a fan of it as of late so uh, definitely excited to have that on VHS um, I'm not gonna grab every popular horror film on VHS I swear to God there's stuff that I pass over all the time but I do like picking up some of them uh, I picked this up because it's a Vestron video it is City Limits I don't know much about it it's actually a very heavy VHS unfortunately um, the uh, sticker on the cover of it is off and it's not inside there but it does have uh, a sticker on the side that says what it is so uh, it is City Limits just doesn't have the the main sticker which is kinda unfortunate but you know it whatever it's it's a dollar uh, after that we have the quest and this is a um, I'm not sure what kind of release this is but uh, it's a film that I, just, I had never heard of and then all of a sudden I heard like three things about it like right after I picked it up so um, it looks like some sort of fantasy like type of movie so that's pretty cool um, I'll check it out eventually after that we have Evil Dead and it's the classic I actually watched this because I was just like man I just want to watch Evil Dead on VHS and then I did and I enjoyed it very much it's a very very good movie probably enjoyed it more uh, this time than the last time I watched it last time I watched it, it was on um, during 2013 when the remake came out uh, after that we have Lord of Illusions I actually um, this is apparently the Clive Barker director's cut. I don't know if this is, um, like, what the difference between cuts are and stuff, but it does come in one of these, um, like, shake case things. I don't, I don't really like these things, but I guess they keep the cover from getting damaged, even though there is damage. Um, so, yeah, I've never seen Lord of Illusions. I own the Blu-ray from Scream Factory. I just never got around to it, so... Uh, it's just one that I picked up. I don't. I don't know why. I'm addicted to grabbing these for some reason. I don't know why. All of a sudden, I want to start a VHS collection. But uh, I got David Cronenberg's Dead Ringers here. I believe this just got a Scream Factory release. Don't really know much about it. Cronenberg's a weird one with me. Sometimes I really like his films. Other times, uh, it usually takes a couple viewings for me to really appreciate them. Uh, after that, we have Candyman, and I simply grabbed this because I love Candyman, and I actually love this VHS cover. Um, way more than the uh, DVD cover that I have. There is a little bit of damage right there as you can see. But it's so weird that these get damaged but they're in these like sleeve things. Uh, yeah, I, I love Candyman. Good stuff. After that we have a Clamshell Anchor Bay release of Nosferatu the Vampire. This is the uh, Klaus Kinski version and I've actually not seen this film. Uh, I do own it on Blu-ray, but I just not got around to it. But I'm happy to have a nice little clamshell. I like these Anchor Bay clamshells. I'll probably stick it up there with the Halloween one, um, and that'd be cool. Uh, after that, we have a copy of Hellraiser. This is the second copy of Hellraiser. And I know what you're thinking, like, why would you buy Hellraiser and then buy another copy of it? And the simple answer is because this is, like, the same release that I had when I was a kid by... Star Maker? Stry Maker? I don't know who puts this out, but this like yellow border I remember as a kid. So I was just like, you know what? Uh, this is the same version that I had when I was a kid. I guess I'll grab it. Um, and I also have a Children of the Corn release like this as well. So I, I mean, I just like it. You know, it's very nostalgic for me. So I figured I would just buy it. Um, after that, um, this is weird. I don't know what this really is. It, honestly, I probably shouldn't have bought this, but I just bought it because it's a screener. Um, it says uh, not video box art packaging full length screener for video rent, rent retailers only and I just had never seen a screener in the wild around my area before so I thought that that was really cool to see and you know 
I thought it'd be cool, but yeah, that's really the only reason I bought that. Uh, you got the Phantom. Oh, jeez. Well, that's neat. Okay. Um, this little thing just slipped out of here. Uh, Universal is Halloween. Uh, it's like a a game, I guess. I don't know if you're supposed to put it over something or something like that. Um, or if there's a was a book, but anyway, it's a Phantom of the Opera. And it has this little cool thing. Um, which is uh, neat. Um, Phantom of the Opera, Opera in Technicolor. Cool, cool stuff. Um, after that, got one of these uh, Death Race 2000 this is in uh, film. The Death Race 2000. This is Dave, uh, David Carradine, Sylvester Stallone. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's produced by Roger Corman. I've never seen this film. Um, I've seen some of the other Death Races, but yeah, I figured I would give it a shot. Uh, this one here, um, I don't know why I grabbed this one either. This is just one of those weird. I don't even know if it's a horror damn film or not, but it it's called The Killing Doctor. It was like kind of sealed, but it's like coming apart, so it's not really sealed anymore. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm weird. Uh, <laughs> this, I don't know why I grabbed either. Um, Lobster Man from Mars. I mean, god damn it. What's wrong with me? Uh, then we grabbed this one from MGM here, and it is, uh, it's like an action type sci-fi genre type thing. It's Time Bomb. Uh, just, you know, one of those things, I just keep grabbing these, man, but that's, that's kind of it, I slowed down a little bit, I haven't been picking up a ton of stuff, uh, in terms of, um, horror, but I did grab a couple of kids horror type things, uh, we have The Dark Crystal, which I recently watched, and it was actually really cool, just such a weird, bizarro movie, um, but I had fun with it, I reviewed it in one of those, um, 15 reviews and 15 minute type things, uh, and then I grabbed these, because these are ultra nostalgic for me, I absolutely love this series, and I wish... I wish there was more of these even released on VHS or just a DVD box set would come out and not have to buy them individually, but it is uh, the Goosebumps films, uh, episodes rather, uh, and this is um, the Night and Terror Tower, which is actually one of my least favorite books and um, episodes. Uh, I just never really liked this one that much, uh, but yeah, really cool to see it, and I was like, oh yeah, definitely gotta grab that. Uh, and of course, uh, I seen this one like the next week, so I was really happy about that. And it was the haunted mask. So you can't hate the haunted mask. This is probably the best episode that they did. Uh, very, very creepy. Very, very scary. Um, actually, you know, very scary for the time. You know, this is this is it's a little scuffed up and stuff. Hopefully, I could wipe some of this off. It might be a little sticky or something like that. So uh, make it a little bit more pretty. But I love Goosebumps. Uh, I grew up reading the books. I had a huge collection of the books. I gave them to one of my cousins, but for the longest time I, I almost had the whole collection. Uh, I was a huge collector. I would go to Goodwills and, and buy them for a dollar or whatever, but finally we have It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown and you know, gotta have it, gotta have it, gotta have it. Cannot pass it up. Alright, let's get into the DVDs here guys. I'm trying to rush through this a little bit because this is a giant update. Uh, Rugrats Season 1. One of my favorite childhood memories was coming home and watching Rugrats and Doug. They would put them on back to back and and I think it started like 7 or 8 o'clock or 6 o'clock or something and I watched Rugrats. I think it was two episodes of Rugrats and then two episodes of Doug. And I absolutely loved it. Rugrats, awesome stuff. Like Doug a little bit more, but finally glad to see these getting legit releases out there. I still need to grab season two, uh, but I did grab season one here. After that, we have uh, 100 Years of Horror. And this is a documentary um, chronicling horror and I just always wanted this you know it's a two-hour documentary uh, I'm, I'm a sucker for horror documentaries just never got around to checking it out uh, it's hosted by Christopher Lee but I will watch this sooner rather than later especially when I bring back the horror 101 segment on the 22 shots of moods and horror uh, after that excuse me if I shown this guys I might have showed it on the last update I just couldn't remember uh, I was kind of I, I normally stick all my things that need updated on a shelf uh, and but this one was kind of like sort of on the shelf so I was like I don't know um, but it is the uh, three movies in one collection supercharged uh, triple feature uh, guilty pleasures presents I believe this is like a shriek show release or something like that I don't know if shriek show is the company that was doing these um, but it, uh, the reason I bought these is because um, two of the films actually features a commentary by Joe Bob Briggs and to me that is awesome so that's why I bought them uh, after that, we have some stuff that I picked up at FYE. We have, uh, it was like buy one, get one free or something like that. Buy two, get one free or something. Uh, and that's uh, Snow White, uh, The Tale of Terror. Um, so a little bit of uh, grim fairy tales here. I've actually never seen this film. Always wanted to check it out, but never got around to it. 
crazy Sigourney Weavers in this film. Um, after that, we have The Killer Next Door. Don't know anything about it, but it, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm just, I'm a fan of uh, official selection at the Sundance Film Festival 2002. So I wonder if this was released in 2002 um, because uh, we covered 2002 on the podcast and I don't remember hearing about this one, so who knows. After that, we have, um, I bought this at Dollar General and it's the Django Kills Silently and the Django's cut price corpses um i don't really know a ton about the django films but uh there were a ton of them made i pretty, think pretty much anybody could make them they weren't like exclusive rights or anything like that uh so uh yeah timeless media group double feature here decided dollar general was like another one of those places where if i see movies in there like i want to buy something <laughs> after that we have uh valerie on the stairs this is a masters of horror we covered the rest of the masters of horror series on uh, the podcast, the uh, season two, so I decided to just pick up the ones that I hadn't had uh, in Valerie on the Stairs. This one was pretty good, actually. Uh, after that, we have uh, Pelts, which is also really good. This is a Dario Argento one. Um, then we have V Word, and this is the. Um, who the hell did V Word? Uh, Ernest Dickerson. And I actually didn't own like three of these, so I, I think I now have the entire collection between season one and season two. I have the mausoleum box set for season one and have season two all owned individually. Uh, after that, uh, I picked these up in Indiana, PA when I went to this drive in um, just at a pawn shop. They were like a dollar a piece or something. And it was uh, this one's called Kill Whitney De Whitney Dead. What? Kill Whitney Dead Scene of a Crime? I have no fucking idea what this is. <laughs> um, but I just grabbed it because it looked cool. Um, after that, I also grabbed The Tingler, which I also grabbed at that pawn shop. Which, funny enough, I actually watched The Tingler two nights ago at the drive-in. Uh, for the very first time, I've never seen it before. So, uh, that was really cool. Uh, William, William Castle, these movies are fun. He did a lot of fun movies from back in the early days of uh, horror and uh, this is this is a really really fun movie it was it was co really cool everybody like screamed uh, at the drive-in it was just really neat um, so that was cool that was man that was really cool actually when I think about it. everybody just started screaming when the the scene where Vincent Price tells everybody to just scream scream you know and uh, the whole it was just like you heard all these screams from all over the place it was just so neat man so neat um, so that's uh, the tingler there picked this up when we were doing our urban legend series and it is uh a i guess volume it's one of the volumes of the urban legends is it truth is it fiction this was like a tv series hosted by natasha hentridge and i think there's like five volumes of this or something but this is like five hours long there's a bunch of episodes episode one two three four five six and a bonus episode but there's there's all these like uh, like sub things in each episode so uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, then I grabbed Grave Encounters 2 at Dollar General. Um, very much enjoyed this movie. It's still sealed here, guys, because when we were actually preparing to review it, I actually couldn't find this copy. It was in my car, actually. I never took it in after I bought it from Dollar General. Um, so I actually uh, had to watch it online, and I already owned it, but I couldn't find the copy. But I found it now. Um, after that, we have April Fool's Day. This was sent to me. Uh, when I was preparing for the 1986 show, courtesy of a listener of the podcast. Uh, thank you very much, homie. Glad that you were there to hook me up, because this is kind of out of print now, which sucks. He sent it all the way from Canada, which I do appreciate. Uh, and then this, I actually just bought this a couple days ago. It is Magic, uh, and this is uh, $5. I got this for $5 at FYE, and uh, it's a movie that I've always wanted to see, um, and finally own the Dark Sky DVD, I guess. Alright, and finally for, oh, actually not finally for the DVDs, uh, I picked this up, Bleeders. Uh, this I got for really cheap. It's super out of print. This DVD was released in like 1997 and, um, or 98, something like that. And I've, I've, I've always wanted it because I used to rent this film as a child uh, on VHS and I always hated it, but I always remembered it for some reason. And, and, uh, yeah, th I mean, it's one of those things where, like, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it or not, revisiting it. Turns out I really, really liked it. It was cool. So, uh, definitely worth finding or grabbing if you can find at a super cheap price. All right, continuing with the DVDs. A bunch of stuff I didn't watch yet. 
Uh, I just got this in the mail from Umbrella Entertainment. It is Kadachia and in, plus Innocent Prey. Um, this is an Australian company. Pretty cool. They put out a lot of awesome stuff. Um, then we have uh, Volume 2 of Drive in Delirium, The Offspring. This is just a bunch of movie trailers. Super, super cool stuff from Umbrella Entertainment. I highly recommend grabbing these. They're, they're just so fun, man. They're just um, tons and tons of, of movie trailers. Uh, 12 hours of movie trailers on this edition here. So super cool. Sounds like I got a loose disc in there. I'm going to have to fix that. Uh, after that, we have um, Probability Zero, uh, written by Dario Argento. Um, seems to be like some type of Nazi war film that uh, Argento wrote. Not horror, but it's cool that Argento wrote it, so I'll definitely check that out at some point. Uh, then we have Terminal Island. Um, I did watch this and review it. It was okay. Nothing super special or anything like that. After that, we have some... Um, I guess uh, some exploitation type movies, some maybe some black exploitation or women's exploitation or something. Uh, we have The Woman Hunt and TNT Jackson, uh, which I first seen in the, uh, what is it, Machete Maidens documentary. I believe TNT Jackson was one that they talked about, which I'm really excited to check these out because that's, those, that, that movie, that documentary was so fun and it looked like there was a lot of craziness in some of those films. Uh, after that we have uh, King Kong, which I've actually never seen. I'm actually going to watch this very, very soon because uh, it is a 1976 film, which is the next uh, thing we're doing on the podcast. So uh, I will check that out uh, very soon. After that we have uh, The Sublet. Um, this is a uh, sort of a apartment horror film. Pretty cool. Uh, courtesy of Umbrella Entertainment as well. After that, we have Dark Harvest, which I did do a review on. Uh, this is courtesy of Intervision. Uh, this is really cool. I really like this Intervision label. Um, I'm a huge fan of these shot on video films. They're just a lot of fun. They're they're very entertaining and uh, just very like they have a lot of heart, and I like that about them. So uh, Dark Harvest also comes with a bonus film, it Escapes, with Vincent Price. I actually didn't check that out yet. Uh, then we have The Tunnel. This came to me courtesy of Wellgo USA Entertainment. I love this film. It's one of the best of the year. Definitely check it out. It's a little bit long, but it is a very good movie. Uh, then we have the film called uh, Detour, which is um, from Magnet. Um, they auto-shipped me this. I, I don't know why I got this. Uh, I might have actually updated this already. I cannot remember, honestly, guys. Um, but yeah, I just haven't got to it. That's just something that I'm not going to get to anytime soon. Uh, after that, we have a couple of films from Jess Franco. We have Voodoo Possession and Slaves. This is from the Full Moon collection. Um, these were like $5 on a Full Moon sale. Uh, and I would really like to pick up the other ones just because um, the spine, which I don't know. I have 9 and 10 here, but the spine basically uh, like make Jess Franco eventually. So I'm kind of, kind of curious to have that made so I, I do want to grab the rest of these eventually uh, but probably not anytime soon all right uh, last for the DVDs here guys uh, a couple of things I picked up at Big Lots uh, I grabbed it's killer it's a killer ride um, it's in a snapper case like, I just couldn't pass up like grabbing this like old snapper case release of this film uh, oh it's called turbulence never mind um, I don't know if this is like a horror film at all or like a survival or something like that. I don't know, but whatever. It was three bucks. Uh, and then I grabbed The Hills Have Eyes Part 2, which I actually did not own for some reason. I've, I, I finally completed my Hills Have Eyes collection with this one. I actually did not own this film, so I don't know why, but I didn't. Alright, we're going to move to the Blu-rays. Alright. So, Blu-rays. Um got a lot of these too uh, so let's get into it first up we have the warlock collection courtesy of best drawn video uh, I was really happy that they hooked me up with a copy of this I did review the first two films I really have no desire to revisit the third one until I do the podcast on it um, I like the first two films honestly guys uh, the, the, you know I think they're really really cool so uh, that's the uh, best drawn video collector series warlock collection I really like what the best drawn label is doing um, I wish they would dip a little bit deeper into the vault instead of putting out like the main films that you expect them to. Uh, but still, I'm, I'm happy to see Warlock on Blu-ray. Warlock, I actually love the first Warlock film. I really do. Um, after that, we have Prom Night. 
which uh, I've been put I, I've been wanting for a really long time. It's a Synapse release. Uh, I've I've wanted it for a very long time. I've just never really got around to grabbing it. Um, it was just always a little bit too highly priced, and then it started going down a lot to like between 10 and 15 bucks and then I was like alright I'll finally grab it because I really don't like Prom Night I, um, I've only seen it one time but <coughs> excuse me guys I wasn't really a huge fan of it but people say well check out the blu-ray you might like it a little bit more like it, it looks better cleaned up and, and you might enjoy it more so I figured I would finally grab it for the one day when I decide to rewatch it after that we have the toolbox murders this is courtesy of blue underground I really 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 like um, Blue Underground, I've been getting really into their releases a lot lately, and I gotta say, The Toolbox Murders is a awesome, awesome movie. I grabbed this one super cheap, it was like under 10 bucks. Uh, I really enjoy The Toolbox Murders, though. It's uh, very sleazy. Um, then we have Southern Comfort, covered this on the podcast a little while back, uh, and it was I, I really didn't like it that much, guys, if I'm being honest. Uh, then we have The Prowler, also another Blue Underground. Um... This movie I have never seen, but it's uh, Tom Savini effects. It's uh, one of the more popular <coughs> slashers that I've never seen. So I'm uh, really excited to eventually check out The Prowler. Uh, then we have another Blue Underground release here, and that is Killer Nun. Which, uh, just, you know, I'm just picking up the Blue Undergrounds, uh, but some nun exploitation. Hells yeah. After that, we have The Living Dead in Manchester Morgue. Um, you know what, man? I, I don't know. Um, I just have never seen this film. It's always been on my radar. It's one of those things that, like, I've almost picked it up a thousand times. Like, it's always been uh, on sale and, and different places. Like, it's one of the Blue Underground titles that I have could have picked up so many times and just put it off. And finally, I decided to grab it. I don't know what it is. If it's just the title that just sounds weird, the cover, I don't know. I just always kind of put it off. I eventually wanted to see it, but I know that people say it's good, so... <coughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I had to grab this. I couldn't resist. Friday the 13th Part 2 for $3 on Blu-ray. I told myself I was not going to buy any of these individual releases because I believe that there will be another box set one day. I never grabbed the box set that came out because it. I really didn't like that they didn't have the uncut version of Jason Goes to Hell. Uh, but I decided that I could not hold off on Friday the 13th Part 2 for $3. So I just had to go with it. I uh, grabbed that at FYE. Uh, Salem's Lot, this was on sale for like five bucks or something, so I grabbed it. Uh, a huge fan of this film. Um, very, very dark and scary. Really cool stuff. A little long, though. Uh, Scream Factory release of The Thing, this was on sale as well. Decided to grab it. I kind of quit collecting Scream Factory, but that was on sale. After that, we have Tales from the Hood, and I had to pick this up from Scream Factory. This is one of my most anticipated releases ever. I absolutely love Tales from the Hood. It's one of my favorite movies. It's probably my favorite anthology. Um, I think it's super relevant to today, and it's a very underrated movie. Uh, after that, we have uh, Cannibal Ferox, and I've just never got a chance to see these movies, so I grabbed the Grindhouse releasing version. Very excited. Three disc deluxe edition, two Blu rays plus CD. Awesome, awesome stuff. I grabbed this used, and it came in excellent condition. So, no hating on me. For, uh, no hating by me for, for uh, used stuff from Bull Moose, man. They, they, they sell nice shit. Uh, then we have Cannibal Holocaust, also Grindhouse releasing version. Um, always wanted to see this. Uh, never have seen it so finally own it and I was waiting to grab it for a good price finally decided to bite it like 22 so uh, after that we have the mummy um, this was sent to me courtesy of Universal Home Entertainment uh, I'll probably do a review of this really soon because um, I've seen it already and you know um, it's not super good honestly <laughs> Uh, after that, we have Get Out. I love this film. This came to me courtesy of Universal as well. <coughs> oh, sorry, guys. My throat's getting really dry. Um, super good movie. Probably one of the best of the year. Uh, Severin Films, The Other Hell. This was really solid. I very much enjoyed this film from Severin. Uh, it's a nun exploitation film. Uh, a little amateurish, but uh, still kind of you know shocking and stuff like that. Uh, then we have Inquisition, which is a Paul Nashy film, and this was actually really good. This this movie was um, way better than I was expecting. It reminds me a lot of Witchfinder General, if you've ever seen that Vincent Price film. Uh, very solid stuff. Highly recommend Inquisition. Uh, this is coming from Mondo. 
Uh, and then we had another Severin release here. I think this is Severin. Oh, no, this is actually Troma. My bad. Um, we have VHS Massacre, um, the documentary, cult films, and the decline of physical media. Pretty solid release, honestly. Um, I like the film. Jeremy didn't like it that much, but I like it. Uh, then we have Blackenstein here from Severin. Uh, it was okay. I, it's not as good as Blackula, but it, it was all right. I didn't have major problems with it. After that, we have Obsessions. Uh, from Cult Epics. This was a very interesting film, uh, written by Martin Cors Scorsese, co-written, as I should say. Um, really weird, voyeuristic film. I actually need to give it a rewatch. Um, it was, it was, it was cool, but I didn't really like love it, you know. But it, I, th I think I was just not in the mood for it too. Um, so I didn't do a major review on it. Uh, then we have Bag Boy, Lover Boy. Um, this movie is awesome. I absolutely love this movie. It is 100% um, one of my favorite films of the year. Super independent. Um, ha like I, I described it as a cross between like May and Napoleon Dynamite. Um, it just is very awkward and cringy and like quirky and stuff like that. Um, just a cool movie. Uh, it really always surprises me what you can do with like independent. Um, films and and you can make such a good movie with you know low low money and and more just uh, good good effort by people involved. Uh, Future Shock: The Story of 2000 AD. It was okay. Not a huge fan of of, of comic books, so it didn't it wasn't that relevant to me. Um, but it was still an interesting documentary. It, it's probably a really good for anybody who is a fan of like comic books or anything like that. Phenomena, this is coming to us courtesy of Synapse Films. Um, I'm putting this off till Italian month. It'll be week one of November, so I'm just gonna wait till uh, we get to that to, to cover this film. So, Phenomena, Dario Argento. Uh, the Creep Behind the Camera and the Creeping Garden. Uh, the, or the Creeping Terror, why did I say Garden? Um, this is uh, the original film, The Creeping Terror, and I guess like a mockumentary on like the making of The Creeping Terror. Uh, I'm really curious to check these out. Um, this is uh, from Sever or Synapse Films. Uh, I really like stuff like this, so really excited to check that out. Going to do that very soon. Uh, then we have a Severin release here, Beyond the Darkness, courtesy of Severin, a film by Joe D'Amato. Uh, I started watching this the other night, and I fell asleep, so I really got to get back to it and check it out. Um, then these two I just got in the mail like two days ago, and that is uh, Mondo Macabro's The Fox with the Velvet Tail, which looks to be some sort of giallo or something along those lines. Um, and Spider, um, which I actually know nothing about, so uh, both of those are coming courtesy of Mondo. Really uh, excited to check those out. Let's go ahead and get into some Umbrella. Uh, so we have um, Death Wish 2 and 3. I've been putting these off because I haven't seen Death Wish 1, so I gotta grab a copy of Death Wish 1 in order to check that out, and then we can, I can finally delve into Death, Death Wish films. So, really excited to see those. I've always actually wanted to see those, but I haven't got around to it. Uh, then we have Idle Hands. Um, I reviewed this a while back. Really for fun, solid movie. It holds up well. Uh, better than I was expecting. Um, then we have The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Um, Scream Factory put it out here in the U.S., but I got the Umbrella version. Uh, really, really, really solid movie. Absolutely love The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Um, then we have two films here. We have uh, Enter the Ninja and Revenge of the Ninja. Um, two ninja flicks. I like ninja flicks. Um, uh, canon classics double feature. Um, I reviewed the ninja films a while back um, from Olive, so it's pretty cool. Uh, Torture Garden. Um, a uh, I think this. I don't know if this is Hammer. I don't think it's Hammer. Um, it might be Hammer. I don't really remember. But uh, Torture Garden here, courtesy of Umbrella, uh, looks pretty cool. Um, hour and thirty six minutes. Uh, then we have Shivers which is uh, David Cronenberg. I did watch this. I did a review on it, but I just haven't uploaded it yet. I'll get to that any second, um, any time now. Uh, I actually, my, I'm having trouble with my editing software, so uh, a lot of things have been delayed and, and stuff like that, but uh, pretty solid movie, apartment horror. Uh, then we have The Devil's Backbone, um, which I actually already own on Blu-ray, um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to actually do with this. Maybe have a contest or something like that. Uh, but this is coming courtesy of Umbrella Entertainment as well. Uh, this is a movie that I bought for uh, one of the episodes we did. Uh, remake versus Original House, of Sorority, House on Sorority Row. And it is, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool movie. This is coming to us courtesy of Cinema Cult. Which I did pick this up for really cheap. Uh, it was like 
18 bucks or something like that. Uh, then we have Blue Beard. Um, haven't watched this yet. Really need to get to it. Resident Evil Vendetta. Recently watched this. It sucked. I do not recommend it. I don't know how people have been giving this positive reviews. I thought it was pretty boring. Um, okay at best, I guess. Uh, then we have The Prison, which is Wogo USA. Uh, have not checked this out yet, but um, looks pretty cool. I like Korean films, so really interested in that. <coughs> After that, we have Stahl Dogs, which I actually own on Blu-ray, so I got a second copy here. Um, this is uh, from the Criterion Collection, but I don't own many Criterion, so I am excited to own it, And you know, even though I already own the film. Alright, uh, let's get into some other stuff here. We have some Arrow and stuff like that. Uh, we have Deathline. Uh, this is Blue, Blue Underground. Sorry, not Arrow. Uh, Blue Underground, um, Deathline. Pretty solid. Uh, I really much enjoyed um, this film. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm lost my train of thought. Uh, Deathline, um, it's okay. Uh, I enjoyed it, um, but I thought it was a little bit overrated, a little bit slow. Um, after that, we have the Stendhal Syndrome, which I absolutely love. Stendhal Syndrome is one of my favorite Argento films, and uh, very happy to have the three-disc uh, Blu-ray there, courtesy of Blue Underground. All right, and let's get into these films here, which uh, these are always fun because I never know what the hell they are. Um, these are Arrow Academy, The Love of the Woman, and then we have the the Jacquees Rivet Collection. Uh, then we have the Yoshida Love Anarch and <laughs> Anarchism, Chism, Anarchism. Sorry, guys. Um, it's hard to read because it's fucking broke downward. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about these because I haven't dug into them yet. There's so many of them. They put them out so fast. I just can't keep up with them. Uh, Spotlight of a Murder. Um, Terror in a Texas Town. And The Big Knife. These are Arrow Academy releases. Um, I have about a million of them now and I haven't watched any of them. But I can't not get them sent to me. Because if I get them not sent to me, then they stop sending me everything. So I have to figure out uh, to make time to eventually check those. Uh, after that, we have this. I just got this in the mail. The Battles Without Honor and Humanity, the Complete Trilogy. I don't know what these are, but um, I'm sure they're cooler than Arrow Academy. Uh, just kidding, guys. Uh, then we have Ronin, Robert De Niro. Um, I don't know. This is such a weird Arrow release because my, like, my pap owns this on DVD. So it's like weird that it's from Arrow. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I prefer the horror stuff. We have The Climber here. Uh, and then we have Doberman Cop, um, which looks to be like another Yakuza movie. Um, those are okay. I actually do like those. They're just very long sometimes. Uh, brain Damage. <coughs> I reviewed this a while back. I absolutely love Brain Damage. Very, very solid stuff. Um, Cops vs. Thugs, which seems to be another type of uh, Yakuza fi uh, film or whatever the hell they are, another Asian flick. Uh, Wolf Guy, not really sure about this one. I actually wanted to watch this recently, but just um, totally forgot to. Uh, then we have Pulse, which is a uh, pretty, pretty, pretty decent movie. I've seen it before. I think I've seen it before. Um, no, you know what? I think, I th I think I'm thinking of the American remake. So I'm actually going to put this on my short list because I do like the American remake, so I'll check that out soon. Uh, Stormy, Stormy Monday, which Arrow's been releasing a lot of like action weird type movies, which those of you who know, I don't really review these uh, action or Yakuza films. Like I, I will every once in a while with like Alive or Dead because it was Taki, Takashi Miike and he has ties to horror and stuff like that. But I mainly, I will review like every horror film that I get from them. Uh, we have The Bird with the Crystal Plumage and um, I recently reviewed this. Uh, really, really solid film from Argento. Great release by Arrow Video. Uh, Madhouse. Didn't really care for this one too much. Actually completely forgot about this film and, and what happened in it like the day after I watched it. Uh, Evil Ed. Very solid release by Arrow Video. Um, I really like this film. I uh, finally got a release and, and it's a very solid film. After that we have Reanimator. I recently reviewed this one as well. 
on the podcast. Absolutely stunning addition. Uh, really, really cool flick. First time watch. Absolutely loved it. Really cool stuff. Uh, and then the last couple we have here is we have Eric the Conqueror. Uh, this is a film by Mario Bava. Um, it seems to be like a sword and sandals type flick, which I'm really, really um, interested in this. Like, I might watch this tonight because uh, I actually I actually really like these movies, even though I don't own any of them, um, besides like one like Sinbad film or something like that. Um, but the, I've always like liked seeing them on TV when I was a kid. Um, and then we have The Ghoul. Uh, don't know much about this one, if it's a modern release or what, but... Um, yeah, the ghoul. And finally here, guys, we have the Slayer, which, cool-ass cover art, I will tell you that. <laughs> but, <coughs> I don't think the film is that great. So, that is, <coughs> oh, man, I'm sorry, guys. <clears throat> I'm sick, and talking for that long really got me all congested. So, thank you for your patience. Sorry I rushed to the end, but I just, my camera battery's dying. I'm sick. Uh, I had to get this update done. Where the hell am I going to put all of this stuff like seriously, I don't even know because I'm all full everywhere. All these spaces are full, so who knows? Uh, but yeah, guys, see you ne guys next time.